Although the Columbus Zoo has been around since 1927, it was 1951 before we acquired gorillas. Earl Davis, the zoo's director at that time, arranged the purchase of two gorillas at a cost of $10,000. Brought from Africa, Millie Christina, two years old, and Baron Macambo, five years old, arrived in Columbus in January 1951. With hopes of producing offspring, the keeper staff gave the two gorillas many opportunities to spend time together. However, after Baron Macambo exhibited what was believed to be aggressive behavior toward Millie Christina, the zoo director halted the process and made the decision that the two should not be put together again. Five years passed, and in 1956, a vet student and part-time gorilla keeper named Warren Thomas observed some very interesting interactions between the two animals. At about the same time every month, Millie Christina would get excited and back up against her mesh wall, and Macumbo would gently play with her. On three separate occasions during the spring of 1956, when Thomas thought the time was right, he would allow the two gorillas to spend time together. Shortly thereafter, the behavior stopped and Millie Christina appeared to be getting bigger. Zoo director Davis was thrilled with the possibility of a gorilla birth, and assuming the gestation period was similar to humans, he announced the zoo was expecting a baby gorilla to be born sometime around the 8th of January, 1957. Zookeeper Warren Thomas arrived at the zoo early on the morning of December 22, 1956, to find a newborn gorilla, still in its amniotic sac, lying on the cold concrete floor. He quickly transferred Millie to another area, then retrieved the baby and took her to the kitchen. He placed her on a counter, broke the amniotic sac, and resuscitated her. This amazing event was the first birth of a gorilla in human care anywhere in the world. This three and a half pound squirmy bundle of life would eventually be known as Colo. Visitors flocked to the zoo to see this little miracle, originally called Cuddles until a name the baby contest provided her with her new moniker, Colo, short for Columbus. The zoo set an attendance record in 1957, a record that would stand until 1992 not much was known about gorilla infants in 1956. Was her three and a half pound weight good? What should she be fed? Many questions arose in the first days after Colo's birth, and the staff did their best to keep Colo comfortable and healthy. The box of rags next to the kitchen heater soon gave way to a brand new nursery, and the nursery staff grew rapidly as more and more zoo employees and their families shared the 24-hour care of the newest member of the zoo family. Of course, the media got involved on a national level. The Today Show called, the New York Times ran daily updates, and magazines, including Time, produced many wonderful articles. Our Little Gorilla even graced Life magazine. The crowds continued to visit. In 1958, Colo, who was by now a star, got a male playmate named Bongo. Bongo was wild born and similar in age to Colo. The two would spend the next 25 years together and, in 1968, produce Emmy, the first second-generation gorilla born into human care. Emmy would be joined a year later by Oscar and, in 1971, by Tony, Colo's third and last offspring. As our gorilla population grew, new habitats were created. By 1973, our zoo began participating in breeding and loan programs with other institutions. In 1978, the gorilla family was moved into a new habitat, which allowed them to be outside for the first time. And in 1979, the first third-generation gorilla in human care was born at the Columbus Zoo. As we moved into the 80s, the zoo continued to expand. Our grade eight population was thriving, and programs now well established, such as the Gorilla Species Survival Plan and the Gorilla Surrogacy Program had begun to be implemented. These programs enable institutions to maintain genetic diversity through animal exchanges and promote a more natural gorilla family atmosphere. In 1983, there was fanfare surrounding another first for our zoo, the birth of gorilla twins Makamba II and Masuba. This was the first time gorilla twins had been born in the Western Hemisphere. 
During this time, world-renowned gorilla researcher Diane Fossey visited the zoo and helped our staff create more naturalistic and stimulating habitats for our gorillas. In 1984, Colo's father, Baron Macambo, passed away, leaving Colo as the senior gorilla in our population. On January 2, 1987, Jungle Jack Hanna celebrated his 40th birthday. Our gorilla celebrated with him when Colo's grandson was born on the very same day. This lovely new addition to our gorilla family was appropriately named JJ. It was quickly realized that JJ's mother was not going to care for him, and an alternative would need to be found. Although Colo was never able to raise her own offspring, she did show very strong maternal instincts. These instincts and the success of the gorilla surrogacy program were proven, Colo chose to adopt JJ as her own. In 2012, Colo set a new record when she became the oldest gorilla in human care. Colo's significance to all gorillas is as important today as it was in 1956. In that time, many changes have occurred both at the zoo and throughout the world. And while there's no easy way to quantify the impact Colo and her offspring have had on the community and the gorilla species as a whole, it's safe to say her birth and life have brought tremendous joy to generations of zoo visitors and staff, instilling in many a deeper understanding of her amazing species and hopefully the desire to see that species continue to exist on this planet for many generations to come.